were uh, just hearing there from Nizar that Gazans are afraid. Um, but first, I'd like to just get your reaction to Israel's continued aerial bombardment of Gaza and now these reports that it's put uh, troops and tanks on the border. What's your response to this? Well, I think in the absence of any kind of accountability or even a verbal reproach, and uh, given the American position we've seen so far uh, providing Israel with cover, it's not surprising that Israel is escalating its aggression on the Gaza Strip, that it's escalating its airstrikes targeting homes. Uh, in the Gaza Strip and possibly contemplating uh, what would be a disastrous ground invasion of, uh, of the besieged uh, territory. Yeah, I mean, Nizar, they're also saying that Hamas has lost faith in the international community. Do you share that view? I mean, President Biden has dispatched his Middle East envoy to Israel. He says to start a negotiation process. Does that give you hope or does that just frustrate you more? Well, I mean, listening to Biden talk about uh, wishing that this would wrap up uh, as soon as possible and the way that he took it so lightly, given the fact that the number of Palestinian civilian casualties is amassing as we speak, uh, just, I think, speaks volu volumes of what the priorities of this administration is. Uh, it's very difficult <clears throat> to tell Palestinians that they should have faith in this uh, uh, multilateral or in this international diplomacy because it has failed them, unfortunately, time and time again. But also, at the same time, uh, this is an international mechanism, the UN and its organs, that are available now to Palestinians, and I believe that they must be used and utilized, at the very least, to put the world um, uh, in a test of their credibility and the credibility of this entire system of laws and standards uh, that should be applied to all without uh, uh, without prejudice and without uh, any distinction. The exceptionalism Israel enjoys and has enjoyed for decades has to end. Otherwise, what we're doing is uh, looking for very superficial, very uh, um, uh, temporary solutions to problems that Israel is facing. Uh, so when, when there is talk about the flare-up in violence, it's about flare-up in violence that's bothering Israel. Because at the end of the day, even if the guns stop now, the daily reality of Palestinians under occupation, under siege, whether it's in, in Jerusalem, in, in Ramallah or in Gaza, it is a very difficult, very aggressive reality. A population that is controlled by a foreign military that is colonizing its land, dispossessing the people and using a whole system of laws to ensure their permanent oppression. There's nothing peaceful about that, that reality. Unless we deal with that, then what we that then all the talk internationally would be just about pushing the can further down, uh, maybe getting some uh, peace and calm for now, but it will just be uh, avoiding uh, the core issue of the ongoing colonial occupation. And then, I mean, of course, this all follows the eviction of Palestinian families from their homes in the, the neighbourhood of Sheikh Jarrah. You're in the West Bank, um, where these settlements are going up. I mean, what can be done there? Consequences. That's what could be done. Um, uh, countries that violate international law uh, perpetually, like Israel does, uh, um, uh, commit war crimes like Israel does, because that's what these colonial settlements are. They are war crimes under their own statute. They usually face consequences, sanctions, um, and other forms of uh, um, political and economic uh, measures that make these uh, crimes costly, politically, economically, um, and militarily. But this is what needs to happen in order for Israel to understand that it must, instead of investing in entrenching this colonial regime, it must end that occupation and, and, and become a normal state uh, that is subject to the same standards and laws as others. Um, without that, I think uh, what we have uh, in front of us is an entrenchment of the conflict, a deepening of the wounds. And as we've seen in the past few days, Palestinians across historic Palestine, be they citizens of Israel or residents of Jerusalem or residents of the West Bank or uh, Gaza, they have reached a collective point of uh, uh, frustration and anger with the very different shades 
of oppression and, and discrimination that they face as Palestinians by the Israeli state. And this is not something, this is not a genie you can take out of the bottle and then put back in uh, at your convenience. The genie is out of the bottle and it needs to be addressed. Um, uh, without that, we, we will continue to see these painful images. We will continue to see the pogroms of, of Israeli uh, citizens marching down streets of Haifa and Lid and Jerusalem and, and, and other cities chanting death to Arabs and going house by house looking for Palestinians to hurt and, and possibly kill uh, while bombs rain down on Gaza and while Israeli soldiers raid Palestinian homes and villages and detain children in the dead of night. That's the reality that people that states have to face, and they need to answer whether they uh, really think this is unacceptable. And if it is unacceptable, then there are actions that can be taken. It's not very complicated. Nuro Day, thank you so much uh, for joining us on the program. We appreciate your time. Thank you.